Welcome back. This week we are going to dive into a topic that most new parents at some point are going to have to deal with as we have ourselves. Yeah, we're talking about diaper rash. Why some babies get them and then five simple steps to prevent and treat these rashes. Just in case you haven't met us before, I'm Kurt. I'm a board certified pediatrician and new dad. I'm Sarah. I am a board certified OBGYN and new mama. And we, we are, are the, the Doctors Bjorkman. have both been in medicine taking care of patients for years um, and only recently made the plunge into pregnancy and parenthood ourselves. So over the past year we have been sharing that journey um, to help you learn from our medical expertise as well as our in real life experiences. Yeah and one of these personal experiences has been having a baby with diaper rash yeah. and first we need to say that diaper rashes are very common. Mm -hmm. Having a baby with a diaper rash doesn't make you a bad parent uh -huh. uh, but there are most certainly some things that you can do to decrease the chances your baby will have a rash and then limit the length of time that rash exists when they get one. Maybe you could start by talking about what the causes of some of the common diaper rashes are and then if parents should be worried about them. Yeah, so the three most common types of diaper rashes that babies get are first an irritant diaper dermatitis or irritant diaper rash. Uh, then there's a candidal diaper rash or like a yeast rash. Uh, and then an allergic contact dermatitis allergic rash. And when it comes to these diaper rashes, the major factors at play are moisture, friction, and then an increased pH and mm -hmm. higher enzymatic activity. The good news is um, they're usually pretty easy to treat and hopefully prevent, and we're going to share five ways to do that with all of you. One quick thing to note before we go any further is that common diaper rashes are usually easily treatable and should get better quickly with some of the basic therapies we're going to talk about today. Uh, if your baby's rash isn't getting better with these simple steps, it's a good idea to go see your pediatrician as there are some other causes of rashes in babies that may need to be evaluated in person. When it comes to things that cause diaper rash, the number one factor is usually moisture. Yeah, and so the modern diaper is pretty amazing in its yeah. ability to hold up to 80 times its weight in moisture, yeah. and then also pull that moisture away from baby's skin. Yeah. However, when the diaper gets full, all that moisture is there, and that diaper is often occlusive, holding that moisture in and can hold that against the skin, which can cause some issues. So there have been studies that have been done looking at, at if there's a benefit of cloth diapers versus disposable diapers and no significant difference has been found. So no matter what type of diaper you are using, the keys to preventing diaper rash seem to be frequent diaper changes uh, to keep their bottom dry and diaper free time, again, to kind of air out their bottom um, to make sure that there is not moisture there. Yeah, and since Sarah mentioned diaper type specifically, uh, there are certain times where your baby may have a sensitivity to a certain material or chemical that's in a diaper. Mm -hmm. And so if you notice your baby's got a rash that doesn't seem to be moisture related, yeah. maybe try a different brand or different type of diaper for a couple days to see if that makes a difference. Why does moisture matter so much? And then what about the other factors that are at play here? Let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah. So the major things with moisture really kind of come down to two things. So first, having a lot of kind of moisture against the skin in a diaper held there creates this warm, moist environment that is perfect for the growth of bacteria and yeast that can cause those rashes. Okay. The other thing is when the skin, the skin is kept moist and unable to breathe, um, it becomes more sensitive to things like friction, abrasion, sure. and breakdown. Okay. But then makes the skin less good at uh, resisting things like bacteria or more sensitive to other kind of allergens and kind of chemicals like that too. Got it. So that prolonged exposure to wetness actually keeps the skin from working effectively. Exactly. And the other thing is that urine and poop themselves can be pretty harsh against the skin when left on too long. Mm -hmm. uh, poop especially is actually pretty basic. Basic meaning the opposite of acidic. 
Yeah, exactly. And basic solutions are often more harmful to the skin than acidic solutions themselves. Got it. The other thing that happens is when urine and stool kind of mix together, mm -hmm. they kind of have this synergistic effect that makes them even more basic or have a higher pH uh, that then can activate some enzymes like lipase and protease that can do further damage to the skin. So to recap, the moisture itself makes the skin more sensitive and kind of fragile mm -hmm. um, to friction and that urine and poop mixture kind of becomes more basic and is really harsh that kind of is just this spiral effect that makes the diaper rash worse. Yep. Gotcha. This is why it makes more sense that babies are more likely to have a diaper rash if they have frequent diarrhea okay. um, or if they've been on antibiotics that then has caused a change in their poops themselves. Gotcha. Uh, interestingly enough, also it's been shown that babies who are breastfed are less likely to have diaper rashes or have them less frequently. The first tip is to change the diaper frequently. Mm -hmm. Don't let your baby sit and poop. As we talked about, that combination of moisture, um, the pee and poop can be very, very harsh and uh, abrasive to baby's skin. So the key is to keep clean diapers. Now, overnight, it is probably okay to not change pee only diapers, mm -hmm. but if your baby has a rash, it is a good idea to just change those diapers frequently to keep their little bottoms dry. Number two is to give your baby some diaper free time. This is extra important if baby has an active rash as it allows that moisture to get out and then allows the skin to do the job that it needs to to heal. Uh, the other big thing here too is to make sure the baby's butt is dry yeah. all the way before putting a new diaper on. So for us it's often I'm taking the new diaper and I'm waving it in front of baby Cecilia's bottom to make sure that all the moisture is gone before I put a new one on. Yeah. Of course the risk of waving the new diaper is that you could have a pee accident yeah. and then change of outfit but we're trading things off here. We'd rather have no rash for us. Tip number three is to get and use a good barrier cream or ointment. Mm -hmm. So the trick with these is that they are a physical barrier to those irritants from pee or poop. Um, and they also keep moisture away from the skin and prevent friction. Yeah. Now you don't have to use these every time or with every diaper change, yeah. but they have two really good roles in that if your baby is having frequent diarrhea, it's good to put them on to help prevent some of that rash. Mm -hmm. um, and then also if they have an active rash, it can really help speed that healing process. Mm -hmm. uh, two of our favorites are uh, butt paste and then also desitin, the purple one. Both of these have 40% zinc oxide, which can help speed that healing process. So we've had two different bouts of diaper rash during the first couple of months. Both of those were in the first like six weeks and both associated with long car trips. Uh, the first was a time we'd unknowingly let her kind of sit in poop and pee and then of course got that irritant diaper rash. Um, but then fortunately it got better pretty quickly as we did frequent diaper changes and then uh, lots of diaper free time to let that little bottom air out with some good uh, desitin uh, uh, barrier cream to help that heal. Uh, the other one, we actually did have a very mild case of a yeast rash too. That was again another long car trip. She ended up sitting in some moisture with a wet diaper that time for a while. Um, that one, we ended up using some Nystatin um, just to make sure we got rid of it. Again, help from pediatrician to make sure we caught that early before it turned into something big. Tip number four is to limit aggressive cleaning. There's kind of two parts to this. So the first is limit the scents, dyes, and alcohol in the wipes that you are using on baby's bottom. So scent-free, dye-free wipes are great. Mm -hmm. Also, just a regular cotton soft cloth with mm -hmm. warm water on it can also be great. Yeah. And then the other piece is if your baby has an active rash, yeah. it can be really helpful to use just a thick layer of barrier cream and you can even put Vaseline over the top of that so that when you're changing baby's diaper, you don't have to wipe all of that off and yes. irritate the skin further. Yep. You can just kind of take off the top layer of dirty, apply a little bit more, and then put the diaper back on without rubbing the skin extra. Tip number five is knowing when to go see your pediatrician. Yeah. And so for this, if your baby's rash is persisting and not getting better after three days, they may benefit from some sort of topical treatment. Yep. This could be something as simple as a mild steroid cream mm -hmm. that can really help kind of calm down some of that irritation and inflammation. Yep. 
However, before starting a steroid cream, you really want to make sure it's not a yeast rash or candidiasis, as adding steroid cream to that can really cause it to bloom or get much, much worse. Yeah. Um, and so for yeast rashes, there are other medications like Nystatin or something with clotrimazole that can help kill that yeast. If it hasn't gotten better, it's also a good idea to have your baby's doctor make sure that it isn't something more concerning. The most common causes are irritant, um, yeast and allergic dermatitis, but there can be other things that cause a rash in the diaper area. Yep, there could be a secondary bacterial infection or there could be other medical causes that present as a rash. Things like impetigo, psoriasis, scabies, uh, nutritional deficiencies, or even an immunodeficiency. And the important thing here is that these are rashes that aren't getting better with those first line therapies that we've talked about today. So those are the five tips we have for preventing and treating diaper rash. We hope that they help you. Instituting these things have certainly helped us and yeah. Sweet Cease's Little Bottom. Um, if you have any questions, tips, please leave them in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do that so you can stay up to date when we release new videos. We hope you have a great week. Bye, guys. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.